we create things and then we become prisoners and we think they can't be changed. We change them. And we can change them any which way, depending on whether it works for us, works for our people. And it, it, it need not be the same thing that anybody else is doing. Botswana's new president, Duma Boko, has joined the AES leaders to make headlines worldwide with his revolutionary stance against both Western capitalism and socialism, advocating instead for a distinctly African democracy. So the dogmatic approach of thinking, this is socialism, this is capitalism, and so this one is socialist, this one is capitalist, we are all here. History does not offer us any blueprints. History offers us counsel and examples of how to do things and how perhaps not to do them. This bold shift signals a potential transformation for the nation and its governance strategy, as well as offering an alternative model for the wider African continent. Duma Boko, previously a human rights lawyer and a leader in the opposition, has emerged as a new ray of hope for many Botswana and Africans at large. His election as president is particularly notable, as he represents the first significant political shift away from the ruling party since its establishment in 1966. We've lost this election massively, right? And uh, we need to come to terms with it and make space and give opportunity to the newly elected leaders and respect them and support them so that they can succeed because it's Botswana's success that's most important. Boko's victory can be seen as a reflection of a wider trend among young African voters who are increasingly dissatisfied with long-standing liberation-era political parties. Rejecting Western capitalism and socialism, Boko critiques both systems for their inherent flaws. Capitalism, while credited with driving economic growth, often leads to increased inequality. It is criticized for favoring those who already possess wealth and power. In the context of Botswana, this means that foreign corporations often reap the benefits of resources without adequately compensating local communities. Boko sees this as a fundamental failure of capitalism to prioritize the well-being of ordinary citizens. On the other hand, Boko does not see socialism as a viable solution either, citing its rigid structure that often stifles individual initiative and innovation. Rather than adopting pre-existing ideological frameworks, he proposes a model tailored specifically to African values. African democracy for Boko means fostering community well-being and promoting collaboration in decision-making processes allowing citizens to work together with local leaders to develop context-sensitive solutions. This young man's vision is significant, not only for Botswana, but has implications for the entire continent. If successful, Botswana alongside countries like Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso could serve as a blueprint for redefining governance through an African lens, encouraging other nations to develop political systems that reflect their unique needs and values. Yet, as with any transformative agenda, challenges loom. Resistance from traditional power brokers, potential pushback from international investors, and difficulties in redefining democracy amidst dominant global narratives remain viable obstacles. Now listen to him before I share his brief biography. So the dogmatic approach of thinking, this is socialism, this is capitalism, and so this one is socialist, this one is capitalism, we are all here. History does not offer us any blueprints. History offers us counsel and examples of how to do things and how perhaps not to do them. So those who think we go to history and we find some system complete, we call it capitalism. We bring it and we apply it. Or we find some system complete, socialism. They are wrong. Plain and simple. We have to identify solutions, sometimes brew them here, that work for our context. context. It is important for us to appreciate this. So that our competition is not about plundering the libraries to find what Karl Marx says in Dark <coughs> Capital Volume 3, or what Lenin says in What is to be done. No, we read these because as the authors themselves said, these are but guides to action not dogma. So the dogmatic approach of thinking, this is socialism, this is capitalism, and so this one is socialist, this one is capitalist, we are all here. And if you want to label me at any point in ideological terms, I belong to the social, the social innovation movement. I'm, I want to create, I want to reimagine, and that uh, Italian philosopher Gemma Tista Vico 
so as we can reimagine society because we created it. Society is an artifact. We create things and then we become prisoners and we think they can't be changed. We change them and we can change them any which way depending on whether it works for us, works for our people. And it, it, it need not be the same thing that anybody else is doing. This is the problem that the BDP faces. What they inherited, they can only tinker with at the margins. No. We want solutions that work for our people, for our country. And when we get into this terrain, you realize you must approach it with an open mind. There are no blueprints. We will sit, we will worry over things and we will resolve them. We will strike compromises here and there and we will proceed. When we realize this is not the right way, we will change course. This is what politics is about. It's not that narrow understanding it's either reformist or revolutionary. Revolutionary meaning replacing wholesale something with something <clears throat> totally different and complete. Politics is more dynamic, more interesting, more engaging. And we need to rescue politics from this, uh, this uh, caricature that it is based in. So this is this is the this is the platform. And so it means none of us hold the wisdom. All of us must find the wisdom. And when we approach the task of finding that wisdom, that truth, we are all humble seekers of after the truth. All of us. How can we not be humble when we are seeking after the truth? This is the whole idea. Duma Gideon Boko was born in Mahalapia, Botswana. His political career is defined by his unshakable commitment to human rights and democracy. Before ascending to the presidency, he served as the leader of the opposition in the National Assembly from 2014 to 2019, where he played a pivotal role in challenging the long-reigning Botswana Democratic Party, BDP, which had been in power since the country's independence in 1966. After three attempts, he successfully dislodged the ruling party marking a significant shift in Botswana's political landscape. As an experienced lawyer with a focus on human rights, Boko spent nearly three decades in the opposition, advocating for democratic reforms and combating corruption. His election as president represents a seismic change, as he is the first president not from the BDP, reflecting the electorate's desire for new leadership and a departure from the past. Just like we are seeing before our own eyes, he has taken a unique approach highlighting African democracy and community-focused governance, deliberately moving away from Western ideological models. His leadership is considered a crucial turning point for the nation, with the potential to shape political developments across the African continent. Our fingers are crossed. What are your thoughts about this? Please share them with us in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more updates on this and other impactful developing stories from the continent.